and Jimmy Roche bats third. Nate Grise has moved up to the four spot today. He was very good yesterday. Jesse Forstill bats in the five hole, the catcher. Blake Dunn, who wears the number one, bats sixth and plays in right field. Logan Hudson, the first baseman, bats seventh. Drew Devine will be the eighth hitter to the plate. He's playing second base, and Connor Henderson rounds things out in the starting lineup for Western Michigan today. On the mound will be Jacob Picotta. The starting rotation for the Bobcats, Michael Klein is the starting pitcher for the Cats. The battery is Klein Picnic today. The batting order for the Cats, Hafner will bat first. Trevor Hafter playing shortstop. Sebastian Fabic moved up to the two hole today. He was pretty solid yesterday, reached base a couple of times and playing in center field. Rudy Rote bats in the three hole, the first baseman. Tanner Picnic doing the catching today and batting in the cleanup spot. And Michael Klein will bat in the five hole. He is the starting pitcher. He will move into the designated hitter spot when he is done on the mound. Tony Giannini bats sixth, plays third base. Ryan Sargent in right field. Where's the number 20 bat seventh? In left field, it is Evan Bourne. At second base, Aaron Levy in the nine hole. Jeffrey Spisak behind home plate today. It was Stidham behind home plate yesterday. Jason Stidham moves over to third base. Mark Schmidt will have the duties at first base today. So it'll be Andrew Stone with a 303 average. Connor Smith, who bats 337. And Jimmy Roach, who has an average of 325 up to the plate first for Western Michigan this inning. The guys who were really dangerous yesterday batting in the five and six spots though was Nate Grice and Blake Dunn. Grice today hits in the four hole, Dunn hits still in the six hole. So we'll see what Klein does when he gets to them. But first he's got to deal with Andrew Stone who yesterday was two for five with a run scored. He scored that run in the first inning on an RBI double off the bat of Jimmy Roche. And here's the first pitch of the game. That's a strike. That pitch catches the outside corner. And so first pitch officially at 3.02. We're two minutes behind today. Michael Klein gets one over for a strike. He winds and delivers, and this is a soft ground ball to Rudy Rode at first base. He'll step off the bag, field it, and step onto the bag for the first out. And that's three unassisted to start the day. So a ground out there for Andrew Stone. That'll bring Connor Smith up, who bats from the right side. Connor Smith batting 337. He has 14 extra base hits, 10 of those doubles, two triples, and two home runs. Michael Klein, the right hander, looks in for the sign, and he'll deal with one gun. That pitch misses outside. The dimensions here at the Wren, same as yesterday, of course. 340 down the lines, 380 to the power alleys, and it's 405 to dead center field. With the batting screen out to dead center, here's a line drive shot into the right center field gap. This is going to get all the way to the wall, and it's going to be an extra base hit here for Connor Smith, the second Western Michigan batter to come to the plate. He doubles into the right center field gap as out in right field, kind of a bad angle taken on that by Ryan Sargent is what allowed that ball to get all the way to the wall. I think it was going to be a double for Connor Smith anyways, whether or not he would have been able to cut it off. And so with one gone, Western Michigan has a runner in scoring position. Michael Klein will take his time as he looks in, and he'll face Jimmy Roach here. As a bevy of juniors are in this Western Michigan starting lineup, there are six of them today. That pitch misses low and away. Five of them bat in a row to start the game. And then down at the bottom, Connor Henderson, a junior, bats in the nine hole. So three to four years in the program is what a lot of the lineup is made of. As the Cats are really kind of intermixed throughout. It's 1-0, and that pitch missed low, and now Klein peeks back to second base. Levy fakes toward the bag. Here's a line drive shot underneath the glove of a diving Hafner. It's going to get all the way to the warning track. It's finally cut off there by the center fielder, Sebastian Fabic, and a runner will score, and that's a double. So there's a double.
Just throw me back on. Yeah, just throw me back on. Runner at second base, one run in, and that one catches the outside corner for a strike. The count is one and one. At second base, it is Rose. She had an RBI double. As Western Michigan has taken a one to nothing lead in back-to-back -back days. They had one yesterday. They have one today. We'll see if, similar to yesterday, if Michael Klein can contain the damage to only one run, as Salisbury did yesterday. Here's a pop fly to right. It's going to carry back towards the wall. It's only 340 there. It might go. Instead, it's snagged by Ryan Sargent as he crashes into the wall along the warning track and makes the play. And halfway to third base and having to go all the way back is Roach. So not only does he not advance, there are now two outs in the inning. That was a nice play by Sargent in right field. That ball was not hit very well, but it had some carry. It doesn't take too much to put it out. When you get it that close to the foul pole down the right field corner, Ryan Sargent was about 10 feet to the left of the 340 sign and the foul, or fair pole, I should say, down that line. And the second out is made on a fly out to right. Here's the catcher, Jesse Forstell. More importantly, Nate Grise has been retired, a guy who was pretty tough to put down yesterday. First pitch here is a strike, swung over the top of by the catcher for still. Grise yesterday, three for four, had a home run, three RBIs, three runs scored, a walk. He did strike out once. Been retired now once today. Runner at second base, two gone, count is 0-1. The pitch, this one misses just outside. Picnic trying to frame it on the edge. One ball and one strike. As Klein looks in for the sign. Trying to contain this damage to just one run in back-to-back -back days. Klein takes a peek back to second base. Here's the pitch. Tapper foul. Bobcats defensively. In left field, it is Evan Bourne today. In center field, it is Sebastian Fabic. In right field, Ryan Sargent. Tony Giannini at third. Trevor Hafner at short. Aaron Levy at second. Rudy Rote at first base. Tanner Picnic doing the catching today. And, of course, Michael Klein on the mound. Also the DH. After that tapper foul, it's one ball and two strikes. Klein comes set at the belt and delivers. And that's a little excuse me swing over to short underneath the glove of Hafner. It may have gone off his glove and into left field, and that'll score a run. That's an error. No doubt about it. Hafner should have been able to make that play, and instead the ball maybe glanced off his glove a touch and then went underneath it. And that's another run. So two to nothing, Western Michigan leads. The runner at first base is Forstell. Dunn is the hitter now. First pitch to him, tap to short. Hafner does field this one on a hop, throws to first. A good stretch on the back end from Rudy Rote for the putout. Western Michigan gets a couple of runs in the top of the first inning. They lead it 2 to nothing as we head to the bottom half. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WAUB.
Captain Sergeant Evan Bourne and Aaron Levy. So the shortstop Trevor Hafner will come to the dish trying to make up for his first inning error in his first plate appearance. And the first pitch misses for a ball. One ball, no strikes. And now it's 2-0. and oh. That one missed outside. So Hafner is ahead early. Two balls and no strikes. It's another beautiful day at the ballpark. Maybe a little bit cloudier than yesterday. It's certainly warmer than yesterday. It got up to 89 today. Did not touch 90 yet, but it was real close to doing so. This one misses high and wide. Three balls and no strikes to Trevor Hafner. Have to expect that he'll be taking all the way right here. Sebastian Fabic is who waits on deck. The 3-0 to Hafner, and that's ball four. That missed well inside. And so Hafner gets a four-pitch walk to start things off in the Bobcat bottom of the first. And Ohio brings the tying run to the plate. Immediately in the form of Sebastian Fabic as they trail two to nothing. Here's Sebastian Fabic. He hits from the right side. Runner at first is Hafner. Five straight balls to start the ball game for Western Michigan starting pitcher Jacob Picotta. The battery today for Western Michigan is the left-handed Picotta, and the catcher is Jesse Forstell. Picotta has a 2.78 ERA, as that one misses high and wide. He has struck out 73 in 68 innings, walked only 18. That's only his 19th walk of the season in 68 innings pitched. Compare that to a guy like Klein. His time has been called. And Jesse Forstill will have a conversation with his starting pitcher. Klein has walked 21 in 42 innings. Sebastian Fabic hits from the right side for the Cats here. 2-0. Runner at first base is Hafner. And finally a strike after six straight balls to start the game. It seems like a strike always comes after a mound visit, and if it doesn't, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because that's when you're supposed to settle down. That's when the home plate umpire is maybe supposed to give you a pitch that's a little bit closer than maybe he wouldn't regularly give you. That one definitely a strike right down Broadway. There's a strike, but it's roped into left field for a base hit, and Sebastian Fabic has been seeing the ball pretty well these last couple of days. He got on base twice yesterday. He had a hit and a walk. And scored two runs, scored both times that he reached. Well, if that streak continues, then that would mean good things for Ohio. There's nobody out. They have runners on first and second. And the best hitter on this team, and quite possibly the best hitter in the Mid-American Conference, in Rudy Rote, comes to the dish. Rudy hits from the left side. He had an RBI single yesterday against Jacob Picotta when Picotta came in as a lefty specialist to face him. That was the only batter that Picotta faced yesterday. This is a fisted fly back of the second base position in shallow right field, and it's going to be caught there by Devine. Western Michigan defensively today. In left field, it is Nate Grise. In center, it's Connor Henderson. In right field, Blake Dunn. At third base, it's Jimmy Roche. Shortstop, Connor Smith. Second is Drew Devine. First base, Logan Hudson. The battery, Jesse Forstell, the catcher, Picotta the left-handed pitcher, a southpaw on the mound. So that little fisted pop-up into shallow right field is the first out recorded here in the bottom of the first inning, but Ohio now has Tanner Picnic to the dish with two on and only one out. Taking his time here is Picotta. Picnic stays in the box the whole time. Watches a strike on a two-seamer with some nice late movement back into the inside corner for strike one. It's a good pitch. Ooh. 
The 0-1 is fouled back off the bricks below the screen here at the Wren. We're in Athens, Ohio today, game two of this three-game series. Yesterday, a 7-6 loss for Ohio against the Western Michigan Broncos. Ohio 20-28 and 28 overall. Western Michigan 21-22. and 22. That one misses outside. One ball and two strikes. Western Michigan 10 in 10 in Mid American Conference play. Ohio 8 and 14. Picana, the left hander, taking his time. It's one ball, two strikes to Picnic. Fly ball to center. Playable. Underneath it is Henderson, and the Cats will have to stay where they are. Nobody advances. It was not hit terribly deep, pretty much straight to where Henderson was playing it in straightaway center field. And now Ohio is in jeopardy of leaving two on after having two on with nobody out. Michael Klein will come to the plate. Maybe he can help himself with the bat here. Klein gave up two runs in the top of the first inning. If he could put a ball in the gap, he could make this a fresh ball game. Klein hitting in the five hole today, batting 219 entering. First pitch to him is a strike on the outside corner. Close, but a called strike. Michael Klein this season does have four long balls, a total of 13 extra base hits, eight doubles and a triple to go along with those four home runs. I wouldn't mind to see him put one out today. Certainly possible with how warm it is and the wind blowing out to right. That pitch misses low, one and one. That pitch was over, but it didn't hit the spot that Forstell, the catcher, had set up. Kind of one of those situations where the catcher wanted it on the outside edge. It came all the way across inside, and when the umpire sees you reach like that, you're not normally going to get the close calls. It was low. Here comes the one and one with two on. Rip to left, carrying back and foul into the Bobcat bullpen. Michael Klein hit that ball a ton. He was just a touch early on it. And that's strike two. I mean, Michael Klein hit that ball 360 feet into the Bobcat bullpen. All it takes is 340 if you can keep it in play to put one out down that line. Here comes the 1 2. Bouncing ball up the middle. Off the glove of the pitcher, Picotta, and going the short way after the deflection is the shortstop, Connor Smith, with a put out at second base of Sebastian Fabic. That was a pretty nice play on a little ball that bounced off the pitcher's glove, and then it goes to short, so we'll score that one 1-6-4 one, on the fielder's choice. We head to the second. Western Michigan leads it 2 to nothing. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
And this is Logan Hudson. They announced it as Blake Dunn, but it is Logan Hudson. Two hits for Western Michigan and two runs. The first pitch is a strike. The second, a curveball that catches the outside corner. It's 0-2. And the 0-2 misses inside. That was a nice pitch there from Michael Klein on the inside corner. Very nice location there from Klein, but it missed just inside. So now it's 1-2 and two to Hudson, the first baseman. And he flares this one out of play. That makes it one ball and two strikes. Here comes the one-two again. Ground ball to short. Fielded there by Hafner. He'll fire on to first, and that's the out. So one gone on a ground out to short to start. The top of the second inning, here is Drew Devine. 7-8-9 is what is due up for Western Michigan this evening. The seven batter already retired. And Devine comes to the plate now. Connor Henderson is who waits on deck. The pitch. That one misses low and away, 1-0. and Here comes the 1-0. That pitch misses high. It's now two balls and no strikes. The 2-0 from Michael Klein. Hard shot through the hole on the left side. It was a grounder that was just smoked through the hole. Put it in the right spot. That's a base hit for Devine, and that'll bring up Connor Henderson. So still no 1-2-3 racks spun today. Only in the top of the second, but both teams have had base runners on every time they've come to the plate. That's the third base hit for Western Michigan. Here's Henderson. Henderson entering today with an average well below the Mendoza line. He's batting at 163. It's been a struggle of a season for him. 43rd game, 40th start. He's 21 for 129. Shows bunt. That pitch misses outside, 1-0. Runner at first base is Devine. He singled a moment ago. Hudson was put out to start things off here in the top of two. Connor Henderson, the hitter now. He bats from the right side. The righty Klein comes set just above his belt. Pickoff move over to first base. Head first dive back in, and Devine is back in safely. Rudy Rook slaps the tag down on him for good measure, but he was back in there. Klein's set, now he delivers. That's a strike. Good slide piece on the outside edge. One and one. Big lead at first base for Devine right now. He holds. There's a strike. Same breaking pitch, same location. Now it's one ball and two strikes. It's really good location from Michael Klein with the breaking stuff. Here's a pickoff move over to first base and back in safely. And Michael Klein did that as he was rubbing his shoulder as if to say he wanted a fresh set of signs, kind of trying to catch Devine off guard over there at first base. But he was back in safely after the pickoff move. Here comes the one-two. Runner holds, and it's a bit of a pitch out, really. It wasn't anywhere near the plate. It was in the left-handed batter's box and a fastball. Wasn't a straight pitch out, but essentially was. One, two balls and two strikes. Count even at two and two. 
Here is the 2-2. And it just missed. He was trying to hit the same spot that he did with a breaking pitch on the two other called strikes in this plate appearance. And that time it was a touch high. So now the count is full at 3-2. and two. Devine might be off here with the count full. We will see. There is one out, though. Not two. He is going on first movement, and that's a ball inside. There was a throw down, but it didn't matter because it's a walk. And so aboard safely is Henderson as he works a walk there. Klein thought he was about to get a called strike three, two pitches earlier, and instead misses inside with ball four there. Devine moves up to second base after the walk. He was going on first movement. And I'll tell you what, though, uh, the pop-up play that Picnic had at home plate had that been a true stolen base, had that been a strikeout, throw him out opportunity, the Bobcats definitely would have converted to double play. That was a beautiful throw from Picnic, but it does not matter as there was a walk. So one gone, and Western Michigan is threatening again here in the second after putting up a two spot in the top of the first. They're trying to add to their two-run lead. And the lineup has turned over, and the pitch misses inside to Andrew Stone, who hits from the left side. He grounded out unassisted to Rudy Roach to start this ball game before Western Michigan got a couple base runners in Smith and Roach. Here comes the 1-0. Flair to left center. Sebastian Fabic moves back on it. It's got some carry. Everything has some carry today. He makes the play, and advancing from second to third base is Divine. And so now there are two gone. Two outs on the top of the second. Western Michigan now has runners on the corners, and here is Connor Smith, the shortstop. Smith yesterday wore the collar, went 0 for 5, had two strikeouts, really struggled. But that's not been his M.O. He sing or doubled, I should say, in the first inning, eventually scored. So one for one today. His average entering was 337. He's now a touch above that. With two gone, he's the man that Michael Klein needs to get. Ball bounces away from Tanner Picnic. It is to his left and coming halfway down the line and now holding over at third base is Devine. He thought about maybe creeping along. That ball didn't get very far away from Picnic. It was just that he couldn't find it. And the Bobcat crowd, honestly, is who helped him find it the most, I'd say. That ball bounced, so it's 1-0. The righty Klein trying to work out of a jam. Gave up two in the first. Trying not to add any more damage here in the second inning. As Western Michigan does try to add to it. And a check down to our first base umpire. And he did not go on the appeal. So it's now 2-0. Breaking pitch outside edge. And Smith was able to hold up. Klein comes set for the 2-0 at the belt, and he delivers. Pop fly right side of the infield. Rudy Rote calls off the second baseman Aaron Levy and makes the play in the vicinity of the second base position on the infield dirt. That is the third out here in the top of the second. 2-0 Western Michigan still leads it. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
Tony Giannini will lead things off for the Bobcats in the bottom of the second inning. Tony G coming to the plate for the first time today. Yesterday, Tony was one for four. He did have two RBIs. First pitch to him misses high and wide, one and oh. Batting 254 entering today's game. His offense has come around some. Going to be one of the many guys that I'm very sad to see leave this program. Here's a fly ball to right. It's playable for Dunn in the right center gap, and he does make the play for out number one. But Tony G is one of those guys who's a hard worker, passionate about the game of baseball, good at what he does, an all-around good guy. Here's a rip foul. That ball was smoked off the bat of Ryan Sargent, who's back in the lineup today, getting his 41st start of the season. This one is popped to the right side, giving it a look as the first baseman Hudson. It'll get out of play, so now it's no balls and two strikes after a couple fouls. Here's the 0-2. That pitch misses high. It's one ball and two strikes. One and two to the Bobcat right fielder, Ryan Sargent. Had a nice little play earlier in this game, smashing into the wood wall. And this one is foul tipped off the catcher, Forstell, for us to do it all over again at 1-2. Waiting on deck is Evan Bourne. Sergeant and Bourne both out of the lineup yesterday, in the lineup today. As Rob Smith tries to get as many right-handers in this lineup as possible. Called strike three on Ryan Sargent. That's the two-seamer that Picada really pitches well. It's got some very good late movement onto the inside corner to right-handed batters. That is a nasty pitch. It's one that if you turn on, you could do some damage with it. But if you can't turn on it quickly, it's going to tie you up. And that's exactly what it did to Ryan Sargent there. Here's Evan Bourne in left field today. Devin Garcia was there yesterday. He hits with two outs. Ball in the dirt. Low. Picana winds and delivers. That's a strike. Good pitch on the outside corner. Here comes the break-even pitch. Missed outside. Two balls and one strike to Evan Bourne. One of three Bobcat left-handed hitters in the lineup today. The 2-1. Fly ball to left. Oncoming, going to be a difficult play for Grise. He slides to his knees and makes the catch for the third out. We're through 2, 2 to nothing. Western Michigan leads it. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
the pitching rotation, Klein has given up two runs so far today as we head to the third. Both of those runs came across in the top of the first inning. Leading things off here for the Broncos will be Jimmy Roche. He bats from the right side. That's a curveball in there for a strike. He's one for one today with an RBI. It was an RBI double in the first inning. And then he eventually scored on an error. Here's the 0-1. That pitch misses high and inside. Does a fastball for Michael Klein. One and one. Michael Klein comes set in front of his face. He rocks and delivers as he throws all the way from the windup. This is a fly ball to center. Sebastian Fabic shields his eyes and makes the play in the left center gap in front of the Ohio Bobcat logo out there in the gap for out number one. So an F8 there for Roach. And so Connor Smith and Jimmy Roach have both been retired after getting hits consecutively in the first inning. So it doesn't appear that anybody in this um, Western Michigan lineup, no two is going to go off the way they did yesterday. And the first pitch is over high, actually. 1-0 as Nate Grise comes to the plate. And Grise was a part of the combination yesterday it hit the Bobcats pretty hard in the five and six spots. It was him in the five spot. It was Blake Dunn in the six hole, and they did some damage. They combined to go eight for nine. And this pitch is in there for a strike. It's one and one. Klein is set and ready to go. Rocks, fires, swing, and a foul tip into the mitt for strike two. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. One, two, line drive to left center, carrying back towards the wall. Fabic leaps, and he robs a home run. An incredible play by Sebastian Fabic in the left center gap right over the top of the Bobcat logo in left center field, and he just took away a home run. That is exactly why Sebastian Fabic is in there. His defense is incredible. Tony Giannini gives him a tip of the cap from third base. Michael Klein is looking out to him as if to say, thank you, my friend. That was an incredible play by Sebastian Fabic as he takes one away from Western Michigan. Nate Grise hit one yesterday to the same part of the ballpark, and he's robbed of one today by Sebastian Fabic. Holy smokes, what a play. And now the first pitch to four still is fouled back to the screen for strike one. That is one of the best defensive plays I've seen all season. Fabic has added now to a list of three or four sensational defensive plays in center field. That pitch is in there for a strike. Belt high fastball, 0-2. So now there are two gone as Klein tries to get through the top of the third inning. He looks into the catcher, Forstell, who bats from the left side. The righty delivers on 1-2. Here's a fly ball to left. It's a lazy fly. Underneath it is Evan Bourne. He'll make the play for the third out. Well, the claps are for Sebastian Fabic in center as he gets a good round of applause, and he'll be greeted positively from the Bobcat dugout. He took a home run away from Western Michigan with his play out there. We head to the bottom of the third, 2 to nothing. The Broncos lead it. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
do up for the Bobcats, Aaron Levy, Trevor Hafner, Sebastian Fabic. I'm sure that Fabic will be greeted well by this Bobcat crowd when he comes to the plate as the third batter in this inning. A swing and a miss from Aaron Levy over a fastball on the first pitch that he sees from Picotta for strike one. So the Bobcats get through the order here in the third inning. As only two batters have reached for the Cats, Aaron Levy batting in the nine hole today. That's a curveball that misses high and wide. One ball and one strike. Lefty-lefty matchup here between Aaron Levy and Picada. And here's a rip to right. And it's hit kind of lucky enough for Western Michigan. Almost right at Dunn in right field. It was smoked. But Dunn makes the play on the line drive. Just had to move back maybe four or five steps to make the play in front of the Bobcat warning track. And now there's one gone. Here's Trevor Hafner, the Bobcat shortstop. He reached on a walk to start the ball game. Sebastian Fabic, who waits on deck, followed it up with a single before they were both stranded. First pitch misses high and away, 1-0. and Jacob Picotta comes set, now he rocks and fires, and that pitch is over but low, and it's 2-0. and So for some reason, he is really picking his spots with Hafner. He walked him on four pitches, started the ball game off with six straight balls, and Fabic and Sebastian Fabic ended up with a line drive base hit following up the four-pitch walk to Hafner, and now he's in jeopardy is Picotta of... Four pitch walking Hafner again as he misses low with a fastball. It's three balls and no strikes. And Hafner will most certainly be taken all the way. Picotta's just got to put this thing over. He could lob up a 45 mile an hour pitch. It's just got to be there. Hafner's not swinging the bat. Here's the 3 0. And he missed with it. Ball four. That's another four pitch walk. He tried to lob in a curveball that broke in late, but it stayed high. And now here comes the Bobcat center fielder, Sebastian Fabic. So aboard is Hafner. Now, many a times, many a times, Sebastian Fabic has, or not Sebastian Fabic, I should say, as here's the first pitch to him that's in there for a strike. But many times you'll see a player in baseball, it seems like, make a great play in the field, then get a chance to come up to the plate, and then do some damage with the bat right after it. We'll see if Fabic is able to do that right here after robbing that home run in the top of this inning. He hits here in the bottom of the third with a runner on and one out. It's 0-1 to him. Picada delivers and he swings over the top of a curveball, does Fabic. And now it's no balls and two strikes. It's a tough pitch. A very good pitch from Picada. So it's no balls, two strikes with one out, and Hafner at first base. He's being held on by Hudson. They play it pretty much straight up everywhere else. It's not really a dramatic double play depth up the middle. Here's the 0-2, and that pitch misses high. One ball and two strikes. Fabic wisely lays off. They do appeal down to our first base umpire, but Mark Schmidt says he did not go. Mark Schmidt at first base. Jason Stidham is at third. Although right now he is in the middle of the field in the B umpire position. Behind the plate is Jeffrey Spisak. One ball and two strikes to Fabic. The pitch. And he just spoils this pitch, fouls it out of play. We'll stick at one and two. Picotta taking his time here. And now he'll throw over to first. And honestly, it was a pretty hefty lead for Hafner. As far as lob throwovers go, that was actually a little bit closer as Hafner has a very hefty lead over there. It's one ball and two strikes. His lead is to the cut of the grass. Now he's shortened it up just a touch. Here's the one-two. And it's kind of a curveball pitch out that misses high and wide. Two balls and two strikes. 
The catcher Forstell was setting up out there, and he was also ready to pop up out of the crouch and fire if need be if Hafner was going, but instead it misses for a ball, and now the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Hafner with a strong lead at first base. Hudson, the first baseman, is holding him on. They play a little bit of a tighter double play depth up the middle. This one is fisted off the hands of Fabic. Fielded by the first baseman, Hudson, and he fires it to the left of the shortstop who was covering Smith, and it goes into left field. And so the Bobcats now have runners on the corners, is advancing to third base on the error is Hafner, and safe at first base is Sebastian Fabic. It was fielded by Hudson, and he didn't, I almost said he airmails this one, but he did not airmail it. He just threw it to the left of Connor Smith as he was trying to cover the bag at second and pulled him off, and Smith couldn't even get his glove on it, and the ball went into shallow left field. And so now the Bobcats are threatening. They threatened in the bottom of the first inning, but stranded two. Now they threaten here again in the bottom of the third. They have runners at first and third without a hit right now in this inning. They have one hit in the ball game so far, but no hits here in this inning. Rudy Rote will try and change that as he comes up to the plate. The pitch to the Bobcat first baseman is knee high and in there for a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Here comes the 0-1 to Rudy. Dismisses high and wide, and now the count is even at 1-1. One one. Hafner is at third. Fabic is at first base. The Bobcats don't run very often. I doubt they'll send Fabic. He's 0-for-1 in stolen base attempts this season. Nobody on the Bobcats has more than four stolen bases. Nobody has more than four stolen base attempts, in fact. The break-even pitch is ripped up the middle for a base hit. Who else but Rudy Rote coming through with an RBI single? He has done it all season long, and he does it again right here. The Bobcats are now back within one after that RBI single. Two to one, and Rudy Rote now has 48 RBIs on the year. And now here comes Tanner Picknick. So Picnic hits with runners at first and second. It seems like Rudy Roach just comes through in every RBI opportunity possible. This is his 49th start. He now has 48 RBIs. That is incredible. To average an RBI a game is quite something. That one's fouled back to the screen. 0-1. No balls and one strike. Picnic, the batter, he hits from the right side. Looks out to the left-hander, Picado, who's really taking his time. Now he kicks and fires, and that misses low. There's only one gun. The double play is in effect, and Western Michigan plays in much more of a traditional double play depth now than they did a moment ago with a force. And even if they had been playing at this depth, they wouldn't have been able to get to that Rudy Roach single up the middle. It was smashed hard enough and in the right spot that it was going to get through no matter what the defensive setup was. Here comes the 1-1. Here's a curveball lifted to right underneath it and making the play in right field is done. Tagging up and advancing from second to third on the flyout is Sebastian Fabic. And now the Bobcats have runners on the corners with two outs. And an appeal back to second base just to check that Fabic didn't leave early and he is safe. And now a quick conversation here from the Western Michigan dugout. Out trots Billy Jernan to have a conversation with Jason Stidham. And maybe it was about whether Fabic left early or not from second. But no matter what that conversation was, it, it's not going to matter because Fabic is safe. And now Klein comes in to hit. Michael Klein bats on the right side. 0 for 1 today. The Bobcats starting pitcher trying to help himself. He had an opportunity to do so in the first inning. Was unable to convert. 
It was a hard hit ball back up the middle that deflected off of the pitcher, and that one misses outside 1-0. and Off the pitcher, Picada. And to the shortstop, Connor Smith, who went the short way to finish things off with Devine at second on a put out there for the third out that stopped the Bobcat threat. Maybe Michael Klein will hope to change his fortunes here. The count is 1-0. Bacana looks over to first base, now he fires. This is a pop-up, right side, back and out of play. There was a long chase from the catcher, Forstell. I think he thought that that might be playable, but it was out of play and onto the concourse level here at Bob Wren. And now it's one and one. That pitch misses outside. Now it's two balls and one strike. Two and one, two outs. Two runners on for the Cats. Michael Klein trying to help himself out as the Bobcats starting pitcher. Foul tips this one into the mitt for strike two. Now it's deuces across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and two runners on for the Cats. They sit as ducks on the pond on the corners. Rudy Rode is at first base. He had an RBI single. Sebastian Fabic is at third. Fabic scored every time he got on yesterday. He was already stranded once today. Here's a ground ball to short, fielded there by Connor Smith. He goes the short way once again. He's got inclined the short way to strand two runners twice now as they go six to four. We head to the fourth. Two to one, the Cats put up a run in the bottom of the third. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WEB. in the field for them as well. 6-7-8 due up here for Western Michigan. It'll be Blake Dunn to start things off. On deck is Logan Hudson. And then waiting in the wings in the hole is Drew Devine. Here's the first pitch from Klein showing bunt and not pulling back. Maybe pulling back, but it didn't matter. It was a called strike from our home plate umpire. So it's 0-1 on a breaking pitch. Kind of lunging out there at it was done, and then I think he pulled the bat back at the last second, but it didn't matter. That pitch misses outside, one and one.
Here comes the break-even pitch from Klein. This ball is ripped to left but foul. It was hit a ton, but well foul. Up over the light down the left field line. One ball and two strikes. Just a beautiful day in Athens, Ohio once again. Hopefully it's a beautiful day where you're listening. If not, then maybe you can picture it being a beautiful day like we have here with a, a bit of a cloudy sky. It is partly cloudy. Here's a line drive. One hop scooped there by Aaron Levy. He spins and turns and fires. A nice play at second base. It was lined off the end of the bat and one hopped into Levy's pocket over there at second. And he spins and fires and makes the play for the first out. That's some good defense by the Bobcats second baseman for the first out here in the top of the fourth inning. Anyhow, I was saying it's a partly cloudy day. It's very warm. The UV index was really high earlier, maybe down a little lower because of the clouds in the sky right now. As Here's the delivery, and this is hit up the middle, and that's going to get through the hole. Aaron Levy was playing more towards the right side that time. Couldn't make back-to-back -back acrobatic plays. If he was able to get to that, that would have been on Sports Center later on because that was well to his right. So that's a base hit there for Logan Hudson. He's aboard is the Western Michigan first baseman, and now here comes Drew Devine. Devine bats from the right side. One for one today. He singled and was stranded at third base in the second. That's a strike. Breaking pitch that catches the outside corner. 0-1 with one runner on. Rudy Rote holds the runner at first base. They play it relatively straight up the middle. They pinch a touch for a double play depth, but they play it a little deeper through the Bobcats at second and short. And the 0-1 misses, and a good job there by Tanner Picnic to saunter on over into the left-handed batter's box, sliding his knees in there to keep that ball in front of him. The third baseman, Tony Giannini, plays back of the bag at third and off by about four steps. Michael Klein comes set at the belt. Nods his head. He's gotten what he wants. He steps off the mound and takes a peek over at first base. Steps off the rubber. Klein comes set again at the belt. Here's the break-even pitch. Runner going. This one's fouled out of play for strike two. That was a pretty good jump for Hudson. Hudson this season is two for two in stolen base attempts. So now it's one ball and two strikes to Devine. The righty Klein looks into the right-handed hitting Devine. Here comes the one and two as Klein has come set to the belt. Takes a longer peek in. Now he fires. This is ripped to the left center field gap. Going to be tough for anybody to get to it. And it's going to get over the top of the wall and out of here for a home run. That one had some serious carry. I really did not think that that one was going to go. And indeed it did. Pretty much right over the 380 mark in left center. I didn't think that was going to have enough carry, but it had just enough to left center, and that ball is gone for a two-run home run and a two-spot here for Western Michigan. And you got a feel for Michael Klein. He had been pitching really solidly here so far today, and he gives up a two-run shot here in the top of the fourth inning to make it 4-1. to one. And now with that two-run shot, Tanner Picnic will go out and have a conversation with Michael Klein, who is clearly frustrated. And, man, it's incredible in baseball how quickly a solid day can turn into a tough one because that right there makes it 4-1 to one in favor of Western Michigan. And that 4-1 to one feels a lot more out of reach than 2-1. to one. Although Ohio has looked solid at the plate today, only two hits, a couple of runners have reached in other ways. There's a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. That ball was a rocket to the left center field gap, and... Not only did I not think it wasn't going to have the carry to get out of here, as here comes the 0-1, misses high and inside, I didn't think that ball was even going to be high enough. It barely got over the top of the wall and left. It was smacked, one ball and one strike. Here comes Klein, winds and fires. There's a strike, curve ball over the outside corner. He's ahead at one ball and two strikes.
Pop fly left side towards the Bobcat dugout, and it will get out of play. Tony Giannini gave a peek to it, and instead it's a pop fly that a kid will run off and chase after as he's trying to get that prize from our concession stand here at Bob Wren. Here's the one-two. Fly ball to right. It'll get out of play. Everybody took a peek at it for a moment, and then it just gets way out of play. The wind is blowing out pretty much to right center, but it's blowing out of the ballpark. It'll carry anything from left, center, right. Here comes the one-two from Klein again. That pitch bounces. Picnic does a good job to keep it in front of him. Doesn't matter because nobody's aboard, but still good work behind the plate. Henderson, the hitter, he walked in the second inning, was stranded at second base. But pretty much anything will carry today with the air as warm as it is and with the wind blowing out like it is. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Soft ground ball to short, fielded by Hafner. He'll go to first with it. And 6-3 to three put out there. And there's two gone in the top of the fourth. And that'll turn the lineup over and bring Andrew Stone to the plate, who's 0 for 2 today. Grounded out to Rudy Rote in the first inning and flew out to center in the second. Hits here again in the top of the fourth. Bats from the left side facing the right-handed Michael Klein. Pitch misses low and away, 1-0. This pitch misses high and inside. Two balls and no strikes. Klein behind, 2-0. Here's a fly ball to left center. Sebastian Fabic on coming. He makes the play. He was shaded that direction. Not too difficult of a play for him to make there for the third out. A two-spot put up by Western Michigan, courtesy of the home run. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. for a two-run home run that made it 4-1. to one. And Sebastian Fabic was able to rob a home run earlier in the game, but he wasn't able to bring that one back. And now here comes Tony Giannini. He's 0-1. for 1. He flew out to right field. They play him straight up. There's a line drive foul and dancing out of the way of it is the Bobcat first base coach down in the coaching box. It was a pretty pretty solid little dance move down there by Ryan Romick. Maybe did a little bit of the limbo to get out of the way of that. Here comes the 0-1 to Tony. Rips it to left. This will be fair, and it will get all the way to the wall. Tony G will take a big turn at first base. It's going to be a close play at second. He is in safely, actually, without a slide and without a throw. Thought that maybe Grise was going to get to it soon enough to get a throw in there, but... He hit the cut, and Tony G was pretty much to the bag, so no throw to it. A stand-up double for Tony Giannini to start the Bobcat bottom of the fourth inning.
Here's Ryan Sargent. This is a long look in from Bacata. He finally decides what he wants. He peeks back to second, now he fires. Ryan Sargent shows bunt and he ends up pulling it back, actually fouling it off, I should say. I don't know. That was just me mixing up my words. My apologies there. That's a bunt foul ball. Sargent wasn't trying to pull back. He was trying to offer at it and fouled it off for strike one. Another long look in from Picada. He wants a specific pitch in a specific location. Now he gets it from his catcher, Forstell. And this one misses low and away. Dancing at second base was Tony Giannini. The shortstop, Connor Smith, was ready to cover the bag at second. But Picada ended up firing and missing low. It's one and one. Picada takes a peek into the dugout now of Western Michigan as he continues to have a long pause here. He still looks to the dugout, and the signals continue to come in. Picada making sure that he has exactly what he needs. And he continues to wait very long on the mound, and now finally... Ryan Sargent calls time. He had been extremely patient through this whole lengthy process. All of a sudden, we've got a root canal happening in the middle of the field. Here's the 1-1. The break even is ripped up the middle for a base hit. That's going to be an RBI single. Tony Giannini rounds big time. The ball is muffed a bit in center field, but Sargent will hold it first base. An RBI single for the Bobcats, and now they're back within two, courtesy of the Ryan Sargent single coming after the Tony Giannini double. It was a long look in from Picada that whole time. And doing a great job of taking advantage of something there was Ryan Sargent, an RBI single up the middle. Here is Evan Bourne. He hits from the left side. Picada taking another lengthy look in. Aaron Levy wiggles the bat out in front of the plate as if to say, all right, bring it, my friend. Showing bunt, puts it down to the right of the mound. Fielded by Picotta, he'll go to first base. That was a close play, but beating the runner by a step. As Bourne is put out there, he moves the runner, Ryan Sargent, over. And so Sargent is now in scoring position for Aaron Levy. And then the lineup will turn over. So here's Aaron Levy. Levy this season has 20 RBIs. He'd like to add 21 to that total right here. Ohio trails 4-2 to two in the bottom of the fourth inning. They've scored a run here in back-to-back -back innings, trying to make it maybe a little bit more something here in the fourth. Here is a fisted fly to left into the corner and foul by a few feet. Grise was chasing after it down the left field line. It was heading towards the area of the tarp distance-wise and was fouled by about three feet for strike one. Aaron Levy almost had an excuse me RBI right there. He didn't really hit that ball considerably well, but it was in a spot that was going to be tough to play. Now Levy pops this one up. Shallow right, shielding his eyes as the second baseman Devine. Now he's called off by the right fielder Dunn, who makes the play for the second out in shallow right field as he charges in and snags it. And so there are two gone with a runner at second base, and the lineup turns over. Here's Trevor Hafner, who's reached twice on two four-pitch walks.
Two gone. Picada works really slowly with runners on. There's no other way to put it. This one is fouled back to the screen for strike one. There are many ways to define the way he works. Like a snail moving across, trying to reach something on the ground that's about five feet from it. That would be one of the ways to describe the way he works. And there's a lot of pitchers in baseball who work really, really slowly, especially when runners are on the mound. It's become much more of the norm. That pitch misses low, so now the count is even at one ball and one strike. And I'm not exactly sure why that has become the norm more often. I mean, obviously, it's you want to get the pitch right. You're worried about location. You're taking your time. You're being patient. It's like free throws in basketball, but, but it's baseball, and it's a part of every single play. And when you've got a pitcher like Picado who takes his time and you look at your watch and 20 seconds tick by before he's even ready to throw the next pitch, as that one misses outside two balls and a strike, it's a little bit of a different ball game. It's interesting the pace that baseball can be played at. It can be played at times very fast. It can be played at times very slow. There are a lot of people who, it blows my mind, as the count sits at 2-1 and one with two outs and a runner at second. As the Cats try and get back within one. A single would do that. That one's fouled back to the screen. Now it's deuces across the board. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. But it blows my mind when people say, oh, I don't like baseball because it's such a slow game. Well, there, there are many times when baseball is not a slow game at all. It is a very fast game. You have fast pitchers. You have high-scoring games. You have... Balls that are getting hit all over the place. You, you even have fast-paced games that are pitcher duels because pitchers are working quickly and teams are just hitting the ball to defenders. But then you'll have some slow moments, and this is one of them. Here's the 2-2, fisted down the right field line, foul. And this is just one of those times where you've got a guy in the form of Jacob Picada who works really slowly with runners on base. He also understands the importance of this moment in the game. You have a 2-2 two -two count, two outs, runner at second base, and you lead by two if you're Western Michigan. That's something you'd want to protect in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ohio's starting to hit you a little bit more. They had only had one hit. Now they're up to four. Patience becomes very important. Called strike three on Hafter on the inside edge. He goes down looking, and Picada's patience pays off. As he gets a called strike three, gives up one in the bottom of the fourth. Four to two, Ohio trails it here. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. In this game, as it's four to two, Ohio trailing Western Michigan in the top of the fifth. Excuse me, in the top of the fifth. And the first pitch is grounded to third base off the bat of Connor Smith. Tony Giannini fields and fires on to first base for the out. 
So one pitch, one out. That's a good start to the top of the fifth inning. And now it appears there's a little bit of stretching happening in the Bobcat bullpen. So maybe Klein will only go five. That is what Rob Smith was hoping he could at least get out of him. That's what you hope every day from your starting pitcher is to at least get five solid innings. Tapper, foul. It goes off the leg of Jimmy Roche. Short complaint from the Bobcat dugout that maybe that ball didn't go off Roche and was fair as it was fielded by Picnic out in front of home plate. But it was a foul ball. It's 0-1. Here comes the 0-1 from Klein. That pitch misses high. Count 1-1. One one. Fastball at missed time. Roach doubled in the first inning. He flew out to center in the third. So 1-2 for two today. The break-even pitch is in the dirt. 2-1. and one. Nate Grise is who waits on deck. Jesse Forstell is in the hole. You've got three batters up consecutively after Roach who are hitless today. 0-6 for six combined although those bats are dangerous in that portion. 2-1, swung over the top of a curveball, two balls and two strikes. Here comes the 2-2. Bouncing ball over the top of the mound, pass to diving Aaron Levy. Back of the bag at second base and a touch to the right of it. Base hit into center field. Thought Levy might have a play on it, but he just couldn't do it. And so now the double play is in effect with Nate Grise coming to the plate. The first pitch from Klein misses outside. That was a good spot from Klein, but it did miss outside, so it's 1-0. At first base is Roach after he's singled. He's held on the bag by Rudy Roach. Very short lead over at first base. A lot of hitting room to that right side because of it, and that pitch misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. And with double play depth being played up the middle, and with Levy even shaded towards the second base bag with the possibility of a steal on, there's really a lot of hitting room to the right side. There's a foul tip into the mitt for strike one. Here's the pitch. This is ripped into the right center field gap. This is going to get all the way to the wall. This is extra bases. This might score a runner. Instead, being held at third base is Roach. In standing with a double is Grise. And now there are runners at second and third with one out. That was a rope into the right center field gap. Off the bat of Nate Grise. First time that he has reached today. That is a double after he was three for four yesterday. That'll bring up Jesse Forstell, the catcher. So double play no longer in effect. There's one out. Connor Smith grounded out to third base to start the inning. The big board here doesn't have that out up there, but he did ground out to start things in this inning. Here's a ground ball to Rudy Rode at first base. He thought for a moment about coming home. He was actually able to look the runner back and kept him from scoring. That was a very good play by Rudy Rode. He ends up getting the put out at first base. That wasn't really what he was trying to do. It was a smash to him at first. He was trying to pick it up quickly enough that he was able to come home if the runner was breaking. Well, Roche got caught halfway off, and Rudy immediately realized, well, I need to go to the bag so I can get an out, and he goes to the bag at the same time that Roche decided he was going to return to third base. So that's two outs now in the inning. And now we're going to get a pitching change. Well. 
our home plate umpire was signaling up here many a time trying to get the attention of our scorekeepers that there were two outs. So I took it into my own hands and ran over there and said, hey, guys, there's two outs. As Connor Smith grounded out to start things, and now Forstall grounded out unassisted to Rudy Road at first base. And Ohio pretty lucky to have avoided giving up a run there as well. And every now and then it takes a little bit of luck to avoid uh, an, an extra run scoring. Jeffrey Spizak, our home plate umpire, has trotted out to break up this conversation. He looks into Rob Smith as if to say, "Hey, all right, let's 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 stop with this conversation. Let's get let's get some baseball going." And Rob Smith was very close to a second mound visit, very close to a second mound visit, as he started to walk off the mound. And our home plate umpire Jeffrey Spizak signaled safe. As if to say, all right, you don't have to make a pitching change. But he was really close to a second mound visit there as he walked off and then turned around and almost came back on. But he stayed on before he turned around to say something to Michael Klein. There is no pitching change. Michael Klein continues to pitch with runners at second and third and two outs here in the fifth inning. Here's a ground ball to short. Hafter fields it, goes to first base, and Ohio gets out of the jam as Rudy Rote keeps his foot on the bag at the back end of things here. Michael Klein gets through five innings. That's exactly what Rob Smith was hoping for. We head to the bottom of the fifth, 4-2 to two Western Michigan leading Ohio. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. consistently where they're out hit in. But it's rare that you're going to win a baseball game when you're out hit. Ohio's only done it twice this season. And they don't really want to have to do it today. But right now they trail in the hit category by four and in the run category by two. First pitch to Sebastian Fabic misses high and inside, 1-0. and Fabic is one for two today. He had a good day yesterday with a walk and a single. He certainly seems to be swinging the bat a little bit better as that pitch is misses high and wide. Two balls and no strikes. He's a hard worker. He's a good kid. Pretty good baseball player. Ohio today for once is actually out hitting Western Michigan with runners in scoring position. They are two for nine, whereas Western Michigan is one for seven. Here's a fly ball to right toward the bullpen of Western Michigan. And he gets over the top of it and is foul and out of play. Two balls and a strike now to Sebastian Favic. Here's the 2-1. That pitch misses high and wide. Three balls and a strike. And that's a walk. So Sebastian Fabic is aboard to start things here in the Bobcat bottom of the fifth. And he is aboard for none other than Rudy Rote, who had an RBI single earlier today. That was his 48th RBI of the season in 49 games played, averaging almost an RBI a game. That 
will get you some chances at next levels. Batting 367 entering today. Slugging 679, an on-base percentage of 448. Rudy Rhodes pretty good. Sebastian Fabic with a short lead at first base with nobody out. And Rudy wrote, fists the first pitch he sees into center field for a base hit. Fabic had to hold a touch at first base just to make sure that the second baseman, Devine, didn't have a play on it. So Fabic will just move up 90 feet. Now the Bobcats have runners at first and second with nobody out. There is someone warming in the Western Michigan bullpen. So I would reckon to believe that we will see the conclusion of both of these starters' days pretty soon. There is activity in the Bobcat bullpen. A righty is warming. I expect Michael Klein to be done once we get to the top of the sixth, and we'll see how much more Picotta can get through. But right now he's in some trouble trying to protect what is currently a 4-2 to two lead for the Broncos, but he's going to do it with two runners on and nobody out. The pitch, that's in there for a strike, to Tanner Picnic. Rudy wrote now 2-3 for three today. Picnic hitting now, he's 0-2. for two. He flew out to center and lined out hard to right. That pitch misses high, one ball and one strike. Picada taking his time as he has many a time with runners on the base paths. Underneath it is Picnic once again. He's done this a couple of times today. This is a fly ball to center field. Fabic thinking about tagging. Indeed he is. This is going to be close at third base. Sliding in there safely is Sebastian Fabic. The throw was there. The tag was just a touch late. And Sebastian Fabic is in safely tagging from second and advancing to third on the first out. And that's big for the Cats because now they can score a run in a couple of ways. And Michael Klein will try and help himself. If he ends up getting pulled before the start of the sixth inning, and there's not much that he's going to be able to do. Time has been called as our home plate umpire awards it to Western Michigan head coach Billy Jernan as he will take a trot out. Activity, as I said, in the Bronco bullpen, so we'll see how much longer Picotta remains in the game. What I was saying, though, is that uh, we'll see. Uh, Michael Klein, of course, could flip the script for himself right here if he's able to get an RBI or maybe even put one in the gap and get a couple of RBIs. Right now, he could only lose this game if he gets pulled in the top of the sixth. Conversation between all the base runners and the Bobcats third base coach Craig Moore and first base coach Ryan Romick to make sure everybody's on the same page. Ohio today is in their green tops, white pants, green helmets. Western Michigan in their black tops with gold numbering. Gold brim on the cap, a gold W, black cap. Ohio lettering across the front of the jersey in black, outlined by white, same with the number on the back. Throw over to first base and back in safely as Rudy wrote. He's not going anywhere. He is 3-for-3 three three in stolen base attempts this season, so he's been able to do so when he has tried. But I highly doubt he's going to be going, and stepping off the mound again is Picada, who is a patient pitcher. Picada patiently pitching. Will it pay off again? And finally, the first pitch to Michael Klein, and he waves at a fastball and misses 0-1. Michael Klein swings and misses. The first baseman, Hudson, was charging as if he was thinking maybe Ohio was going to try and put something on and bunt. But Michael Klein was swinging all the way. And he swings over the top of it, and now he's down. No balls and two strikes. Rudy Rote had a very short lead at first base. Didn't really take advantage of what Western Michigan maybe was trying to convince him to do, and that was extend his lead and maybe take off for second. Here comes the 0-2. That misses high and wide. A peek over to first base by the catcher, Forstel, but he's not going to back pick. He thought about doing it.
Bacata peeks over to first base. Now he looks in. He'll fire at 1-2. Michael Klein spoils this pitch out of play. We'll stay at 1-2. and two. One ball and two strikes is where we sit. Ducks on the pond, first and third for the Cats, just one gone. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Ohio trails by two. This pitch misses high and wide, so the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Michael Klein trying to help himself out. Sebastian Fabic is at third base. Rudy Rote is at first. Ohio has scored a run in two consecutive innings. They're trying to make it three in a row with a base hit here. That pitch misses high to Michael Klein. The count is now full. Three balls and two strikes. Tony Giannini waits on deck. Sargent in the hole. Both of them with base hits today. Giannini with a double. He scored. Sargent singled him home. But it's Michael Klein who hits now. He's 0 for 2. He's been put out on fielder's choices. So actually he was not put out. But two fielder's choices have ended threats in the first and the third inning off of his bat that went 6-4. Michael Klein will take this one inside for ball four. It was close, but a walk there and the bases are loaded. They are packed with cats. 4-2, bottom of the fifth, Tony Giannini with an opportunity to maybe give Ohio the lead. He hits here with the bases loaded. Giannini, one for two today. He doubled in the fourth, eventually scored on the Ryan Sargent single. And now time has been called, and it appears that we're going to get a pitching change, and we will. A right-hander will be coming in for the Broncos. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WUB. We'll go for a 60-second pause and let you know who the new pitcher is after this 60-second pause. This is Bobcat Baseball. Loaded opportunity with just one out. And Tony Giannini and Ryan Sargent, the six and seven hitters coming up. Tony G at the plate now. Sargent is who waits on deck. Evan Bourne is in the hole. Our home plate umpire will wipe off home plate with his foot. Our umpire is in the blue tops and gray pants today. 
That's what I was wearing today when uh, I was umpiring Little League Baseball over at Sandlot here in Athens, Ohio. Still in the blue top. Got into shorts because it is a hot one in Athens. Might be 90 out, honestly. We might have gotten there. I don't think we are there right now, but we may have gotten there earlier today. Here we go. Tony Giannini hits with the bases packed. Here's a fly ball to left with some carry. Back towards the wall. It's going to be in front of the warning track and making the play is the center fielder Henderson. Tagging and scoring on the play is Sebastian Fabic. Moving up from second to third is Rudy Rote. And Ohio is now within one after that RBI sack fly to left. Fielded by the center fielder, but it really was to left field. As Henderson came over and made the play, and now there are two outs. But Ohio has gotten back within one, thanks to the sack fly RBI from Tony Giannini. For Giannini, that is now his 18th RBI of the season, and kind of continues to add to him having played some better baseball here on the back end of the season. It took him a long time to adjust to third base. His defense has improved and his offense has followed suit. Two outs. The Bobcats still threatening. Ryan Sargent is the hitter. He had an RBI single that drove Giannini home back in the fourth inning. He swings over the top of the first pitch he sees here for strike one. A single here would tie the ball game. It's Rudy Rode at third base. Runners on the corners. Michael Klein is at first. He walked. Here comes the 0-1. And that pitch missed just inside from Jack Zott. So Jack Zott with a little bit of a rude welcome. Not necessarily too rude, I guess, but to come in with the bases loaded and to give up a sack fly. Of course, that won't be registered to him. Ryan Sargent peeks out to Zott. Zott comes set just above his belt. Tips his cap a couple of times. Here's the break-even pitch. He misses high. Two balls and a strike. Two one with two outs. Zott delivers. Here's a line drive. Base hit into left center field. That'll get down and score. Rudy Rote from third base. Moving up 90 feet is Michael Klein, and we've got a tie ball game. That is some good piece of hitting there. The Bobcats doing a great job with the little things here in the bottom of the fifth. They've tied it up 4-4 four to four with a two spot and are still hitting. They got runners at first and second, and Evan Bourne coming to the plate. Jack Zott has now been welcomed rudely. A sack fly, run scoring, and then a base hit RVI. Those runs are going to be registered. Of course, to Jacob Picotta. Stepping off the mound there was Zott. And so heading back to second base was Klein. Here comes the pitch. Line drive to right, carrying back towards the wall. This one will go. Home run, a three-run home run, Evan Bourne. And Ohio has taken the lead, 7-4, to four, with a big spot here in the bottom of the fifth inning. A three-run home run off the bat of Evan Bourne that goes about 380 feet off the netting by the softball field. And Ohio leads it 7-4. to four. They've put up a five spot here in the bottom of the fifth. Evan Bourne plays a little bit of big fly. Some good fight shown by the Bobcats here today. The lead changed six times yesterday. And now today, Ohio has finally taken the lead for the first time. Seven to four, they've scored five runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning, and Levy gets into one to right, but it's going to go well foul. He smoked it. He was well on top of it. Zott has come into the game, and his fastball has not had much life to it, and Ohio has been all over it. Talk about a good piece of hitting by Evan Bourne. Here's the 0-1. This one is fouled back to the screen. That is Evan Bourne's third home run this season. He is now up to 10 RBIs after that three-run home run. Here comes the 0-2 to Levy. And that pitch misses high and inside. Thought for a moment it was going to be called strike three, but our home plate umpire did nothing with it. 
And so it's one ball and two strikes. Here's Zott. Rocks fires. Here's a high bouncer. It's going to be fielded by nobody. Talk about poor communication. It was a chopper to the right side. The first baseman, Hudson, came charging. He then appeared to think that Zott was going to field it, and I guess assumed that Devine was going to be covering the bag. Nobody fielded the ball. It almost gets into shallow right field, and on at first base is Aaron Levy, and since nobody touched it, you can pretty much guarantee that that's going to be scored a base hit because I don't think that went off of anybody's glove. And now the thing that I discussed earlier has finally come true. Ohio, it's very difficult. It is very difficult to win a baseball game when you are not out hitting your opponent. Well, Ohio now has eight hits. They have tied Western Michigan in that category. Time has been called. And now a conversation will occur on the mound between Forstell and Zott. And our home plate umpire wants this conversation to be short. He immediately trots out there with two outs in the fifth. I don't blame him. This game started at three. We're already an hour and 45 minutes into it, and we're only in the bottom of the fifth inning. Maybe pick things up a touch. But more importantly than the speed of the ball game is the fact that Ohio has taken the lead here in the bottom of the fifth, and they're still hitting. The lineup has turned over. Trevor Hafner hits now after the single by Levy. And Ohio is up to eight hits, and time has been called, and we've got a call to the bullpen. Coming in will be another right-hander. Zott struggled. Gave up that three-run home run. Two runs end up being earned. Gives up three hits in a third of an inning out of the pen. And Western Michigan will try and get some help from someone else. Ohio leading 7-4. to four. We'll let you know who the new pitcher for Western Michigan is after this 60-second pause. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. has put up a big inning here in the bottom of the fifth. And it comes likely when Ohio will probably be making a pitching change too. So the timing isn't too bad to have a long inning out in the field. Aaron Levy is at first base. There are two outs and Trevor Hafner is the hitter. He has yet to see a pitch. So the first pitch he sees will be from the new Western Michigan pitcher. Entering the game right now is Zach Mahelik. Mahelik. Mihalik wears the number 29. He is from Jackson, Michigan. First time we've seen him this weekend. Pitches with two outs here. First pitch swinging from Hafner. Pop up, left side of the infield. Back of the bag at third and towards the foul line. Now drifting back into fair territory. And making a difficult play is Roach for the third out. Ohio scores five in the bottom of the fifth. They lead it 7-4. to four. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
Chance of rain all day tomorrow. We will see what's going to happen with that. Hopefully that doesn't affect us at all. By the way, 88 degrees is the high today. Again, in my car it said we reached 89. I believe it. Here's a foul ball, strike one. To start things here in the top of the sixth, that's Logan Hudson, the Bronco first baseman. Here's the 0-1 from Kenny Ogg. This one's fouled back to the screen for strike two. Got a little bit of sun today, maybe a little bit too much. Put sunscreen on, but apparently not enough out umpiring baseball this morning. I mean, it's easy not to put on enough when you haven't been in the sun once yet this year. No balls and two strikes. And that one is fouled. And so now it's 0-2. Here comes the 0-2 from Kenny Ogg. High and tight. Gives him a little bit of music right there. A little bit of chin music. One ball and two strikes. A little bit of barking coming from the Western Michigan dugout. Here's the 1-2. Line drive into right, playing it well, and underneath it is Ryan Sargent. They had him in the right spot. Knew exactly where Logan Hudson drives the ball the other way. Sargent was played right there. Barely had to move it all to make the play for the out. And now there's one gone. Did I lose you? Okay. Connection issues today. I'm not sure why. Luckily, you haven't missed anything, really. Uh, I believe that we got the fly out to right. If not, it was a line out by Hudson to start things here in the top of the sixth inning. And now hitting, and did he go? And indeed he did. Our home plate umpire doesn't even need help. Devine goes around for strike one. Devine is the hitter here. The count is one ball and two strikes. Here comes the one-two. And that one is off the screen, and so now it's... Still one ball and two strikes. Our home plate umpires had to signal a couple times. Normally they are on it over there. They really are. So no criticism from me. That's a tough job. Sometimes it is a long game baseball. As I said earlier, sometimes it moves fast, sometimes it moves slow. This pitch misses low and inside. Now it's two balls and two strikes with the count even up on the hitter divine. Bats from the right side. A single and a home run today. Foul tips this one. Off the catcher, picnic, and we'll stay even at two balls and two strikes. The pollen, like I said, is just everywhere. On the papers, on the iPad, on the laptop. That was strike three, but instead it's called a ball, three and two. Kenny Ogg didn't miss by much. It was on the outside corner, and it's called a ball. Now the count is full at three and two. Here comes the full count delivery. Fly ball out of play foul. And so we'll do it again. The 3-2 misses high, and that's a walk. So Devine works a walk. Kenny Ogg thought he was going to have a called strike three. Instead, he ends up with a walk. Seen that a couple times recently, it feels like. I guess it happens relatively regularly. Henderson will hit now. The center fielder, Connor Henderson, 0 for 1 with a walk. Stranded at second base in the second inning. He grounded out to shortstop back in the fourth and hits here in the sixth. Throw over to first base. Good pickoff move, but back in on a head first dive. Was divine. That was close. Very good pickoff move over to first by Kenny Ogg. It's a short lead at first by Divine. Very short. Long pause by Ogg. Now he fires, and that pitch misses low and outside. 1 0. Oh.
Here's the 1-0 from Klein. Instead, it's a pickoff move over to first base and back in safely on a head first dive is Devine. With how short his lead is, he probably didn't need to that time, but did anyways. Here's the 1-0. That's a strike. Belt high fastball in there for strike one. One and one. Pickoff move to first and back in again on a head first dive is Devine. Kenny Ogg is paying a lot of attention to Devine over there at first base. Devine this season, two for three in stolen base attempts. Kenny Ogg doesn't want him to get aboard. Here's a bouncing ball to short. Going to be a double play opportunity. Six, four, three, double play by the Cats. They have turned many of those this season. Mark that down as number 45. And that's how Kenny Ogg gets out of the top of the sixth inning. The runner was going, but then when the ball got chopped high, he stopped for a moment thinking it may have been in the air. He was cut out to dry. And then a shortstop, Hafner, goes onto the second baseman. Levy, Rudy wrote with a stretch on the back end. And the Bobcats have turned their 45th double play of the year. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Ohio leads by three. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. We're just about ready to roll as Western Michigan is set defensively. Sebastian Fabic will lead things off here for the Cats. Last night, Matt Harvey made his debut for the Cincinnati Reds. I, uh, I was impressed by what he was able to do. He went four innings and gave up just two hits, or one hit, and it shouldn't have even been a hit, to be completely honest, uh, but it was. And uh, it was a ball that just dropped in between Billy Hamilton and Scott Shebler in the outfield. That pitch misses high and wide to Sebastian Favick for ball one, one and oh. Uh, but he looked good, you know. The fastball velocity was much better than it's been for quite some time with him. He was throwing almost 96. 95.8 was the highest he hit on the gun. And that's good stuff for the Cincinnati Reds. Not really sure if he's going to be a Red for more than up to the July 31st trading deadline, but it's good for Cincinnati to have a starting pitcher as it's two balls and no strikes to Sebastian Fabic here um, in the rotation that is actually maybe good. Here's a fly ball. That one will get out of play. Two balls and a strike. The Reds are really bad. I mean, they are just really bad. I'm really hoping that they get better. I mean, I, I am okay with bad seasons. Obviously, I'm a Reds fan. I'm excited to be interning with the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's going to be fun. Um, and and I'm, I'm hoping the Pirates do very well. But obviously, I am a Reds fan, just as I am an Astros fan. And they have been really bad this year. That pitch misses. It's three balls and one strike to Sebastian Fabic, who's been doing a pretty good job of getting on base lately. A walk and a single yesterday. He's got a walk and a single so far today. Trying to continue that theme. The Pirates, by the way, 22 and 16 right now. That's a strike. Three balls and two strikes. Fabic wishing maybe that he would have taken a hack at that one. The Reds, on the other hand, are 12 and 27. The Reds could go on. This is the thing that blows my mind about the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds could go on 
a record-breaking winning streak. Three balls and two strikes to Fabic. Fouls this one out of play. Just a liner over the top of everybody's heads down the right field line. That netting goes down the bomb, down the dugout a good ways, but not all the way. And that was a line over the top of a couple of heads. But the Reds are on a four-game winning streak right now. They could win 22 more in a row. They could have a 26-game winning streak. And they would just be 36 and 27. Here's a pop fly, right side of the infield, in foul territory. Coming to make the play is Western Michigan's pitcher, Mihalik. Zach Mihalik entered in the bottom of the fifth inning, was able to get the final out after Zott was roughed up pretty good. It was a three run home run off the bat of Evan Bourne that gave Ohio the 7 4 lead that they sit on right now. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. But the Reds would literally be 34 and 27 and probably still not in first place in the NL Central. That is insanity. That's a strike, 0 and 1. So, what I'm trying to get at is I understand being bad, but being this bad is incredible. Look at Los Angeles. If they were to rip off 26 wins in a row, they would be 42 and 22. Not the case for Cincinnati. Not the case. That pitch bounces in the dirt, one ball and one strike. You know, there's a difference between bad and historically bad, and the Reds are on pace to be pretty bad. But they've won a couple of baseball games in a row. They're on a four-game winning streak. The offense look good, looks good. Joey Votto playing very well. Scooter Jeanette has hit a home run in four straight games. Here comes the break-even pitch to Rudy Rote. Fly ball out of play down the left field line, one ball and two strikes. So, you know, here's to hoping the Reds aren't historically bad this season. I had to watch historically bad baseball in Houston for many years. And honestly, the trade for good baseball now, for how bad it was then, it was a tough one. But it did pay off. Here's the 1-2 to Rudy Rote. That misses high, 2-2. Two and two. Rudy's never going never gonna to offer it something like that. That one's fouled back to the screen. Two balls and two strikes to Rudy. There is one gun. Here comes the 2-2. And fouled back to the screen. And that one... Right by a couple down there on the bottom level. They both flinched pretty badly on that one. I'm probably going to get a hard time for most people about how red I am right now. I did not put enough sunscreen on today. Don't tell my mother. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Unfortunately, won't be getting to spend it with her, but maybe through the airwaves we'll be able to. So a happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. I certainly will wish that tomorrow as well. Here's the 2-2 to Rudy Rohde. Spoils another. This is a sensational Baseball player. Rudy wrote, I cannot wait to see what opportunity he gets at the next level. He is a great guy. He is a very good athlete. And he he has really done well for the Cats in his time here. And he's going to get a chance at the next level. And that's three balls and two strikes. And no, actually the pitch hit Rudy. So he's aboard. So Rudy Rode is aboard after a hit by pitch. He spoiled a bunch of pitches. The ball hit him on the inside foot, and he's aboard. By the way, speaking of former Bobcats getting a chance at the next level, Mitch Longo had a really tough start to the season. He started in Lynchburg this season and was struggling early. Well, he's turned things around a little bit. That pitch misses inside to Tanner Picnic, 1-0. Back on the 27th, he had a 3-for-4 game with an RBI. Did Mitch Longo, 2-for-5, 1-for-4, 2-for-5, 2-for-5, 3-for-3, 1-for-4. Had a hitting streak going until he was pinch used as a pinch hitter in a game on May 6th. One ball and one strike. And he did have an RBI still in that game. Now, he has gone 0 for 10 in his last two games, but 
Mitch Longo, pretty good baseball player, and his numbers are showing for it. And the guy hit 307 in 2016 in short A and 137 at-bats. Here's the pitch. That misses low and away to Tanner Picnic. Rudy Rote will hold it first base as doing a very good job of keeping that in front of him was the catcher for still. Uh, but Longo was very good there. And then in, in 2017, I mean, he just dominated at full A, batting 361, playing in 55 games. Had 73 hits in 55 games. Batted 361. Went up to Lynchburg, and here's a pop fly out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Played in just five games and was 9 for 16. Struggled a little bit early this year in 18 down there uh, at advanced A, but has found his bat again. He's got eight extra base hits, seven doubles, a triple in 27 games. He's got 30 hits. Does not yet have a home run. Uh, hasn't really shown a ton of power at the next level yet. Here's a line drive into the right center field gap, and it's going to get down. It's off the diving center fielder's glove. Rudy Rode advances to third base, and he is in there safely. And it's a really lucky thing there for the Cats that Henderson wasn't able to make that play on the dive because Rudy Rote was going to be hung out to dry. But I'm glad that he was on his horse because now he sits on the corner. There's runners on the corners for the Cats. Picnic is at first. Rudy Rote is at third base. Mitch Longo did some good things for the Cats, but these Cats are doing some good things for themselves today. Runners on the corners, and Michael Klein, the hitter now. The starting pitcher for the Bobcats, who's currently in line for the win. He has remained in the game at the designated hitter spot. He walked in the fifth inning. Mihalik has worked himself into a bit of a jam, has the WMU pitcher, and time has been called. We'll get a conversation on the mound, and in fact, we're going to get a pitching change. It appears a lefty will be coming in. So when we return, Ohio will have runners on the corners. They are leading 7-4 to four in the bottom of the sixth inning. New pitcher coming in for the Broncos. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. 60-second pause for this pitching change. Is a southpaw. Michael Klein, of course, bats from the right side.
The lefty takes a peek over to first base. With Bobcats on the corners, he will throw over. Picnic is at first. Rudy Rote is at third. Base paths have been busy with Cats today. Rudy Rote aboard a couple of times. Sargent aboard a couple of times. And Levy, Bourne, Giannini, Picnic, and Fabic each with a hit. The lefty kicks and fires. That ball is in the dirt. It's a passed ball coming in to score is Rudy Rote. And Ohio now leads 8-4. to four. So the first pitch officially thrown there by McConnell is probably going to go down as a passed ball. And the run scores on it. 1-0. and oh. Klein steps back into the box. The count is one ball and one strike. Taking his time is McConnell. He deals with just a runner at second base after the pass ball, advancing up 90 feet to second. Was Picnic on that pass ball as well. Now it's one ball and two strikes as Michael Klein swings over the top of a fastball. McConnell taking his time. One out. Here's the one-two. That pitch misses outside. Two balls and two strikes to Michael Klein. It's actually two balls and one strike. Our scoreboard wrong there, so we get the correction. Here comes the 2-1 to Klein. That one is fouled back, so now it is 2-2. Two and two. By the way, just taking a peek at this, Western Michigan won a game on May 2nd against Northwestern, 26-15. Those midweek games get crazy. That is wild. Wow. Two balls and two strikes to Michael Klein. Here's the pitch from the lefty McConnell. That one is fouled off of the catcher. And so we'll keep it going at two and two. A good plate appearance here so far by Klein. Trying to turn it into something more. Here's the 2-2. That pitch misses outside. And so now the count has run full at three balls and two strikes. The runner in scoring position is Picnic. He advanced there on a pass ball. Rudy Rote scored on it. 8-4, Ohio leads. The pitch from the Southpaw McConnell. Fisted fly ball to shallow right. On coming, calling everyone off, and unable to make the play was the right fielder done. There was a lot of traffic out there in shallow right. The first baseman, Logan Hudson, and the second baseman, Devine, were on coming. And Dunn is the one who tried to take charge, does the right fielder for the Broncos, and he was unable to make the play, and the ball drops in. And I believe it went off of his glove, so that would go down as an error but the official scoring has not yet gone up. Here comes Tony Giannini. And it is scored a single, which, yeah, honestly, I mean, that, that makes sense. That was a tough play in shallow right field. So the Bobcats up to 10 hits today. And that's an RBI single, or I apologize, not an RBI single. The runner that scored was... Rudy wrote earlier on a pass ball, so it's still just one run across here in this bottom of the sixth inning for the Cats. They lead it 8-4. to four. They have runners on the corners with one out. The first pitch misses high and wide to Tony Giannini. Giannini hits here. He's one for two today. He's a sack fly RBI in the fifth. Here's the 1-0 to Tony G. He gets underneath this one to shallow center, and actually it is going to be caught by the shortstop. 
I was way off on my analysis of that one. My apologies. I think the heat might be getting to me. I looked out to center, and the center fielder, Henderson, appeared to be oncoming as if he was going to make the play. I, I lost the ball myself, and then all of a sudden, it was the, the shortstop, Connor Smith, coming up with the ball at shortstop. So it's a pop-out. You know, I, I've heard a couple of very classic Harry Carey calls that are, are like, there's a high drive, deep right field carrying, caught by the second baseman. Like, well, apparently you were a little off on that one. Two outs, runners on the corners for the Cats, 8-4. to four. That pitch misses high and wide, one ball and no strikes. If you're going to make a mistake, you might as well clean it up. And clean it up, hopefully I did. That was a pop out to short. That is the definition. It was hit a ton in the air and didn't go very far. Ryan Sargent is the hitter. He's two for three today. He's got a couple of singles, both RBI singles, and the first pitch missed, and this one catches the outside corner. The count is even at one ball and a strike. Here comes the 1-1. And the break-even pitch misses low. Two balls and one strike. And that's a called strike on the outside corner. So now it's deuces across the board here for Ryan Sargent. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two ducks on the pond for the Cats. Runners on the corners. Michael Klein is at first base. Tanner Picnic is at third. One run in for the Cats. Trying to add to it is Sargent here. Here comes the 2-2. Curveball. Chopped to short. Going to be a tough play. Connor Smith will have to get this on to first base quickly. But beating it out is Ryan Sargent. That's an RBI single. It was a high chopper. Connor Smith was going to have to make a sensational play to beat Ryan Sargent, and Ryan Sargent beats it out for an infield single and give him an RBI. Ohio leads now 9-4. to four. Lefty-lefty matchup here as Evan Bourne comes to the plate. And I just freaked out because there was a gigantic bee in my face as soon as I looked up. One for two today is Bourne. He's got the biggest hit of the day. It was a three-run home run in the bottom of the fifth inning for Ohio. Put him up seven to four. They've added two here in the bottom of the sixth to lead nine four now. Here's the pitch to the left-handed hitting Bourne. And he checks his swing. Did he go? No, he did not, says our third base umpire. And now the count is at one ball and one strike. Here comes the 1-1 with two out. Ground ball up the middle. Going to be a tough play. Back of the bag at second. Going the short way for it is Divine as he fields and goes to second base for the out. So that's three down for the Cats, but not before two runs come across. We head to the seventh. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
Seven hits and an error in the field for Western Michigan. Nine runs, 11 hits, and one error for the Cats. The first pitch misses outside here to start things in the top of the seventh. 1-0. and Here's the 1-0. That pitch misses low. Two balls and no strikes. Andrew Stone is the hitter for Western Michigan. Trevor, or uh, it's Andrew Stone up right now. Smith and Roche do up along with him. And that's in there for a strike. So now, after falling behind three balls and no strikes, Kenny Ogg has gotten one there to make it three and one. And that's ball four. So Kenny Ogg was able to avoid a four-pitch walk by getting a show-me fastball over for a strike, but then misses there. So aboard is Stone. Here comes Connor Smith. Now, time has been called, and there is a right-hander warming up at the Bobcat bullpen, although just throwing lightly. So this discussion on the mound, which is happening between Rob Smith and the rest of his infield, I assume will not lead to a pitching change, although with Rob Smith and the Cats, I've seen weirder things. Otter things, I guess I should say. And now our home plate umpire will break up this conversation. And Rob Smith trots back to the dugout. There's one thing Rob Smith knows. It's what he wants out of his pitchers. Pitching coach at Creighton on some very good baseball teams. Now he's headed this Bobcat program. He's done a really good job here taking the Bobcats to the NCAA regionals in 2015 and 2017, winning a couple of Mid-American Conference tournaments. Here's a pitch that misses low, 1-0. Unfortunately, this year it doesn't appear that Ohio will be making a trip to Avon, although you never know. They could get on a bit of a win streak. That would have to start today as that pitch misses inside, two balls and no strikes. The runner at first base is Stone. He walked to start things off here in the top of the seventh. Connor Smith, the batter now. He bats from the right side. Roche is waiting on deck. Here's the pitch. That's a strike, two and one. And so Kenny Ogg found the zone much needed. Ogg has two walks already today. He has faced four batters. That's a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Double play is the reason that he's only had to face four while pitching a full inning of work. Here comes the 2-2. Bouncing ball up over the top of the second base bag and into center field for a base hit. Taking a big turn at second base is Stone, but he'll end up holding up there, and that was a Bob Wren bounce. There's been a few of them this weekend. There won't be nearly as many next year when the Cats are playing on what will be a turf surface here at the Wren. Here comes Jimmy Roach. Roach bats from the right side as well. Roach bats from the right side. He's two for three today, and he, an excuse me, foul ball back to the screen for strike one. He doubled in the first inning. It was an RBI double to left center. He scored on the play. He singled in the fifth and was stranded at third base, flew out to center back in the third inning. Here's the 0-1, and he fouls this one out of play, and so now he's behind no balls and two strikes is Roach. Kenny Ogg's gotten ahead of him here. If Rob Smith could get two innings out of Kenny Ogg, I'm sure he would be gloriously pleased with that. So far, it's been one inning out of the right-hander, and he works with runners at first and second, and nobody out here. But he's ahead 0-2 on Jimmy Roach. 
And here's a bouncer to third base. Tony Giannini will field it. He'll have one play at first. Rudy Rote with an unfortunate pick. Was unable to get to it, and that will score a run and allow the batter Roach to advance to second base. And I, unfortunate pick is really not the, the right description. I, I was trying to say an unfortunate bounce as Rudy Rote tried to pick it and was unable to do so. The run coming across makes it a 9-5 to five ball game. And now, because of the ball getting away from Rudy, there's runners at second and third, and nobody out. So if you thought yesterday's game was crazy, maybe today is trying to get a little crazier. As Western Michigan is trying to claw back into this ball game, they trailed by five at the start of this seventh inning, but now they trail just by four after scoring a run, and they have two runners in scoring position. The tying run is in the on-deck circle with runners at second and third. And Nate Grise at the plate. That's a strike to him, a curveball over the top, 0-1. That's a good pitch from Kenny Ogg. He needs to stay lower in the zone. He's been up high. Fly ball, right side out of play. No balls and two strikes. Kenny Ogg ahead again. But he was ahead 0-2 on Jimmy Roach, and a run ended up scoring. And for some reason, the gate is open down the first base line, so that's been closed. As time was called. Here's the 0-2 to Nate Grice. And he fists this off his hands and back to the screen. It's 0-2. No balls and two strikes. Kenny Ogg fires. That pitch misses low. That makes it one ball and two strikes now. Runners at second and third. Ohio leading nine to five. Western Michigan is threatening to do some damage here in the seventh. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kenny Ogg gets his first strikeout out of the pen. Much needed one, too. The batter is Jesse Forstell now, the catcher. He's 0 for 3 today. His batting average entering the series was up in the 270s. It's dropped below 250 now. Reached on an error in the first, flew out to left. That pitch is in there for a strike. Grounded out to Rudy Rote in the fifth inning. So he's put the ball in play every time, but has yet to reach base. 0-1 after that pitch is in there for a strike. Kenny Ogg set to go again. Swing and a miss. Fastball. Put that belt high. Just challenging Forstell with that pitch. And he wasn't able to do anything with it. No balls and two strikes. Kenny Ogg ahead on the batter. It's the catcher Forstell. Here's a bouncing ball to the right side. It's going to get through the hole. The Bobcats were playing a bit of an odd shift, and that gets into right field. It's going to be fielded by Sebastian Fabic. Fabic in the right center field gap, and two runs have come across. That makes it a 9-7 to ball game. A three spot has been put up here in the top of the seventh by Western Michigan, and this game is not in hand by any means. Thought that the Cats were really going to kind of start wrapping this thing up a touch as they were up 9-4 to four as we entered the top of the seventh. But now Western Michigan has added three runs, and they still have a runner at first base after that two RBI single and just one out. Smith and Roche coming across to score on the RBI single from Forstell. And there's one gone. And this pitch is in the dirt as he starts things off with Blake Dunn, does Kenny Ogg. One ball and no strikes. 
Runner on at first base. That pitch is in there for a strike. That was close. One ball and one strike. Runner on at first base is four still. Kenny Ogg comes set at the belt. Here's the break even pitch. Line drive to left field, carrying back towards the wall. It's going to get to the wall on one hop. Fielded there in left field by Evan Bourne. He gets it in quickly. That will hold the runner at third base. Four still at third. A standing double for Dunn. And it has been a struggle here in this top of the seventh inning for Kenny Ogg. Runners at second and third. Nine to seven is the score. Three runs in in the top of the seventh. Only one out. And Rob Smith will call time and likely make a call to the bullpen. He's going to trot all the way out to the mound to have a conversation with his infield first before he possibly makes a pitching change. We'll see what happens. And Rob Smith will make a pitching change. And so we'll let you know who the new Bobcat pitcher is after this 60-second pause. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. A couple times in the last couple of days, and I just absolutely love it. it. It's my jam right now, to be completely honest with you. Well, Eddie Cut enters. The thing that matters much more than my jam right now when it comes to songs is this jam that Eddie Cut enters the game in. There are runners at second and third. The score is 9-7. to seven. Western Michigan has put up a three spot here in the top of the seventh. The batter is Logan Hudson. First pitch to him missed low and inside. It's 1-0. and The second pitch is in there for a strike. It's 1-1. One and one. one ball and one strike from Eddie Cut. Normally, we going to cut it is the song that plays for Eddie Cut when he enters. But I don't know if that was his entrance song or if that's just what the people in the booth decided to go with. I like it. One ball and two strikes. A curveball over the top catches the outside corner. That's a good pitch. The one and two from Eddie Cut. Hard ground ball foul down the third base line. I tell you, hopping out of the dugout quickly and all over getting to that ball was Chase Harris. He was quick to it, and now he ends up down in the bullpen. One ball and two strikes. One out, runners on the pond, second and third. Fly ball to shallow right. I don't think this is deep enough to tag. We'll see if they test it. They will test the arm strength of the Bobcat right fielder, and it is a beautiful throw. And now they throw back to second. Can't get the runner there. They've got the runner at the plate when they come to the back side of things. Indeed they do. Tanner picked up with a nice tag there at the plate. So the Bobcats threw after the fly out to right field to Sargent, and it was a heck of a throw. Picnic. Caught the runner in between second and third after the runner that was at third base stopped from tagging. Picnic fired down to second. The runner tried to advance from third to home, and he was out at the plate, and that is a heck of a double play for the Cats. And a, a quick comment.
Aaron Levy bats. He's one for three so far today. And the first pitch inside misses for a ball. Matt McConnell continues to pitch for Western Michigan as he's gone two-thirds out of the bullpen so far, giving up two hits, faced all four Ohio Bobcat batters. Levy the fifth that he'll face. That one's in there for a strike. It's one, one, one ball, one strike. So we made it through the seventh inning stretch. We sit in the bottom of the seventh with Ohio leading 9-7 to seven as... Western Michigan clawed back into it with three runs in the top of the seventh. Aaron Levy fouls this off the cap of the catcher, Forstell. It's one ball and two strikes. Here's the one and two. This one's fouled out of play. And so we'll reset again at one ball and two strikes. Here's the one and two. Swing and a miss. Aaron Levy goes down on strikes. And that's the first strikeout for Matt McConnell out of the bullpen for the Broncos. The Bobcat lineup turns over. Here's Trevor Hafner. He's reached twice today. Scored a run. Walked in the first. Walked in the third. Went down looking in the fourth inning and popped out to third base in the fifth. And this one is in there for a strike to Trevor Hafner. Looks like a changeup that catches the outside corner. No balls and one strike. Here's the 0-1. Line drive to center, carrying back underneath it towards the track, leaping up and crashing into the wall and making the catch was Henderson in center field. I believe he made the catch in center field, and indeed he did. He throws the ball back in, and rounding third and heading for home was Hafner. He was going to wait until that ball was shown to our umpire, and it did get shown to our umpire, and the out is made on a great play by Henderson. So Sebastian Fabic made a great play, robbing a home run earlier in this game, and now his counterpart, Henderson in center, says, hey, I can play this position pretty good, too. He crashes into the wall in center and makes the play for the second out. Now his counterpart, Sebastian Fabic, hits. Two gone in the bottom of the seventh. Swing and a miss by Fabic. Pulled his head out pretty early there. It's 0-1. The 0-1 to Fabic fouls it back to the screen. He was on that pitch and just missed it. And it's no balls and two strikes. Waiting on deck is Rudy Rote. Rudy today, two for three. Continues to hit the ball as well as any player I've seen in college baseball this season. No balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Fabic pops this one up out of play. We get ready to go to the eighth here shortly. Can Ohio maybe do something with two outs here, though, first in the bottom of the seventh inning? Today, Ohio is four for ten with two outs. That's not a bad uh, number, but they'll be four for 11 after Fabic foul tips this into the mitt. Uh, the catcher, Forstell, does a good job to hang on to that pitch. We head to the eighth, Ohio leading 9-7. to seven. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WUB.
We are in the top of the eighth inning. It'll be Divine, Henderson, and then the lineup turns over to Stone. First pitch, misses somewhere, 1-0. and It was a curveball that looked like it came back down and caught a lot of the plate, but it's called a ball. 1-0. and Here comes the 1-0 from Eddie Cutt, and that one bounces low. And so now it's one ball and no strikes. Correction, two balls and no strikes. And now that pitch misses outside and makes the count 3-0. and oh. So Eddie Cutt is in possible jeopardy of walking Divine on four pitches and strike inside corner. Divine today, a single in the second, a home run in the fourth. He walked in the sixth, so he has reached base all three times he's come to the plate today. He is trying to make that four times. Here comes the three run from Eddie Cutt. That's a strike on the outside corner. Now the count is full at three and two. And a look over to the dugout by Divine as if to say, you got to be kidding me. I thought that was outside. It was close, called a strike, count now full, three balls and two strikes. Eddie Cutt ready to go, winds and delivers. There's a bouncing ball foul. And it went off of Divine. And it almost looked like it hit his bat a second time. But it went off of Divine in the batter's box. And so now the count will stay full at three balls and two strikes. Here comes the full count delivery. Here is a fly ball into left. Oncoming. And unable to make the play was the left fielder, Evan Bourne. He had been called off by the shortstop, Trevor Hafner. And Hafner just wasn't able to find the ball as soon as it was coming down. It dropped in behind him. It was a tough spot for anybody to make the play. Fabic was on coming from center, but he was shaded a little bit more towards right. There was no way he was going to get to it. Hafner would have had to have seen it off the bat perfectly and taken a dash towards it and made a basket catch, honestly, to make that play. And Bourne had to come all the way from deep left. It just dropped in there in no man's land and is in for a single. And here comes Henderson. And Devine has now reached base all four times he's been to the plate today. He's three for three and has a walk. Here's Henderson, who has reached base just once. He walked in the second inning. He's grounded out twice, once into a double play. First pitch to him is a strike, 0-1. It's a curveball in there. And a throw over to first base here by Eddie Cutt. And back in on a head first dive is Divine. Counts no ball and one strike. And the 0-1 is in the dirt. One and one. Here comes the break-even pitch from Eddie Cut, line to left, foul. And that was a loud way to get to strike two, but we get there that way. And sometimes the way you get to a strike will make you rattle in your boots. And that liner from Henderson will make anybody be a little anxious the next time they try and throw that fastball by somebody. He was on it. One ball and two strikes, though. No damage done. Cut is set at his chest. He fires, and that pitch misses low and away. It's two balls and two strikes. Eddie Cut set for the 2-2. Here it is, swing and a miss, and it's snagged by Picnic. He completes it just in case with a tag out, but it didn't matter with a force at first base, and there's no way that Devine was going to be trying to get down to second there. And so now there's one gone after the strikeout from Eddie Cutt. That is his first strikeout so far today. And now here comes Andrew Stone, the designated hitter. 
He is 0 for 3 with a walk. He scored in the seventh inning. One of the three runs to come across in the seventh. Now he's back to the plate again and taking a lean and immediately throwing over after the lean as Eddie Cutt to first base. Devine was leaning towards second and Eddie Cutt wasn't having anything of it. Devine has a solid lead at first base. Two steps to the cut of the grass. Eddie Cutt throws over again. Rudy Rote slaps the tag on him and he's back in safely on a head first dive. And that one is fouled back off the brick wall. No balls in a strike. Here comes the 0-1 from the righty Eddie cut. Fly ball, center field. Fabic underneath it. And he will play it for the out. There's a fly out to center field, and now there are two gone in the top of the eighth. 9-7, to seven, Ohio leads it, trying to protect the two-run lead. Western Michigan has been able to hit the ball well in this series, though. Ohio and Western Michigan are even in the hits category, both with 11. Seven runs, 11 hits, and an error in the field for Western Michigan. Nine runs, 11 hits, two errors for the Cats. Here is Connor Smith after the fly out by Andrew Stone. The shortstop Smith is two for four today. There's a throw over to first base and back in on a head first dive is Devine. Another throw over and that one was close. Rudy Rote slapped that tag down quickly. The ball also almost got away from Rudy, but he was able to play it. Still yet to throw a pitch to Connor Smith. Has Eddie cut. He'll throw one here. Misses low and inside. 1-0. and One ball and no strikes. Eddie cut looks in for the sign. He kicks. He fires. And that ball is off the mid of Tanner Picnic. That'll be a passed ball. Back to the wall. Two balls and no strikes. And that will allow the runner to advance to second base. Devine advancing on that pass ball. Makes it 2-0. That's a foul ball chopper to the Bobcat dugout. Unable to make the play as a member of Rob Smith's coaching staff. Two balls and one strike. At second base is Devine. Ohio leads at 9-7. to seven. Two outs in the top of the eighth inning. Here's a chopper to short. Fielded there by Hafner. He fires on to first base. Rudy Rote keeps his foot on the bag. He is so good on the back end of plays, and Hafner's got a good arm. The Bobcats get out of it. A runner left to board. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Ohio leads by two. This is Bobcat baseball on 1340 WOUB.
Reds, 11 hits, two errors as they hit here in the bottom of the eighth. Here's Rudy Rote. He popped out in the first. He's gotten aboard three straight times. An RBI single, a single and a run scored, a walk and a run scored. Lefty-lefty matchup here as Matt McConnell continues to work. Here's a high drive to right, and you can kiss it goodbye. Rudy Rote with a solo blast to right. Another home run for the Bobcat first baseman. Rudy Rote continues to rake. This man is now up to 15 home runs this season, his 32nd extra base hit, and his 49th RBI in his 49th game, averaging an RBI a game. Rudy Rote continues to do it for the Cats. Ohio now leads 10-7 after the Rudy Rote home run. And that's 12 hits for the Cats now. They take the lead back in that category. 10 runs, 12 hits for the Cats today. A couple of big blasts. One from Evan Bourne on the left side of the plate. And Rudy Rode, a left-handed batter, adds one as well. He is up to 15 dingers this season. And 49 RBIs. Having an incredible year for the Bobcats. First pitch misses to Picnic. The second is a breaking pitch that misses high and wide. It's two balls and no strikes. McConnell looks in. This is the ninth batter that he's faced so far today. Curve ball. That one is in there for a strike. It's two and one. And the clouds have started to come in. There is a chance for rain starting tonight, and it lasts through tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't affect senior day festivities and game time. We'll see what happens. Here's the two and one, and there's a line shot into left field, a base hit. That is Tanner Picnic's second hit of the day. He singled in the sixth, and now he adds another single here in the eighth inning. And Ohio's got a base runner with nobody out. Here's Michael Klein. Klein today, one for three with a walk. He scored back in the fifth inning after reaching on that walk, was stranded at second in the sixth. That pitch misses low and away. Singled back in the sixth inning. 1-0, and time has been called, and I believe that this is going to be a pitching change. And we will see there is activity in the Western Michigan bullpen as they try to stay within striking distance before we get to the top of the ninth inning. Right now, Ohio has that solid insurance run to make it a 10-7 ball game. There is no one warming up in the Bobcat pen, so I, I believe the ninth is going to be Eddie Cutts. Rob Smith is going to hope that he can squeeze a little bit more out of him. Jake Rowan got used yesterday, so with an off day in the middle, that means that Rowan should be available tomorrow if need be. He's certainly not available today. And we do have a pitching change coming up for Western Michigan, so we'll take a 60-second pause and let you know who that new pitcher is. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.
we got to get a bumper. Uh, we got to get a bumper in there for me. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB. Max McDoolin in here for Russ Eisenstein. It is another beautiful day. Throw me back on. Hello? Hello? Why won't? Hello? Hello? Just throw me back on. This is Bobcat Baseball. Max McDoolin in for Russ Eisenstein today. Apologize, we've had a couple technical difficulties, but luckily it hasn't, I don't, I don't think it's affected us too badly. Um, but, you know, we're, we're doing our best here. But it's the uh, bottom of the ninth inning, Ohio, or geez, bottom of the eighth inning, Ohio hits here. Hello. Hello. Just throw me back on. All right, folks, I don't know what's been going on. We've got a little bit of technical difficulties. We're doing our best to bring you the last of this game. Max McDoolin here. I'm flying solo today in the place of Russ Eisenstein. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning. 10-7 to seven is the score. Ohio leads it right now. Michael Klein is the hitter at first base. It is Tanner Picknick. New pitcher in the game is Jim Townsend Chase. Townsend Chase, we got to see him yesterday. The count is 3-2 and two on Michael Klein. He swings over the top of a breaking pitch and goes down on strikes for the first out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yesterday, we saw Townsend Chase for two-thirds of an inning. He faced a couple of batters on the back end of the game. He's kind of been the de facto closer for Western Michigan so far this season. And so now that'll bring up Tony Giannini. Giannini, one for three today. The Bobcat third baseman doubled in the fourth and scored and had a sack fly RBI in the fifth. Here's the pitch to Tony G. That ball misses low, 1-0. and So Townsend Chase strikes out the first batter that he faces. He still has to deal with Picnic on at first base and Giannini the hitter. Here's the 1-0. And swinging over the top of that pitch is Tony Giannini. One ball and one strike. One and one to Tony Giannini. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss over the top of that one. One ball and one strike. Throw, just throw me back on. One ball and two strikes. One out. Here's the pitch from Tony to Tony Giannini. That ball is fouled out of play. So we still sit at one ball and two strikes with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ohio has a runner on at first base in the form of Tanner Picnic. 
Heard just a touch of thunder a moment ago. We're hoping that the weather can fend off to finish off this ball game. And then to play game three tomorrow. This one is fouled out of play. We stick at one ball and two strikes. Western Michigan, just like Ohio, is trying to do whatever they can to claw their way to Avon. Right now, Western Michigan has the upper hand in that category. They're 10 and 10 entering today's game in MAC play, whereas Ohio is 8 and 14. One ball and two strikes to Tony G. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss over the top of a, another breaking pitch, and that's two batters, two strikeouts for Jim Townsend Chase out of the bullpen. Here's Ryan Sargent. Ryan Sargent hits from the right side. He's had a very good day today. Three for four. Three RBI singles in his last three plate appearances. He went down looking back in the second inning. Bats against Townsend Chase here with two gone. Here's the pitch. Curve ball misses inside as it broke back over the plate but was a little bit too late in getting to the mitt. It's 1-0. and we have now reached three hours and seven minutes of game time today. That's not too bad after where we were heading into the sixth inning. Two and a half hours in. Here comes the 1-0. Fly ball, pop fly, right side, infield, underneath it on the infield grass is the catcher, Forstel. He makes the play. That's out number three. We head to the ninth. Ohio will try and win it. They lead 10-7 to as we head to the top of the ninth. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WUB. Garcia in center field, it's Fabic. In right field, it's Ryan Sargent. Tony G at third. Hafner is at short. Aaron Levy at second. Rudy Rote at first base. Eddie Cut, the pitcher. Tanner Picnic is the catcher. Here's the pitch. Fouled out of play for strike one to start things off in the top of the ninth inning as Eddie Cut tries to nail down this victory for the Cats as Ohio leads it 10 to 7. Eddie Cut would certainly get credit for a save. He's gone one and two third innings so far and has a strikeout, Ohio leading by three runs, and there's a line drive, leaping grab made at second base by Aaron Levy for the first out in the top of the ninth inning. That was a nice play by Levy, he went up the ladder for the first out, and there's one gone, and here is Nate Grise. Grise doubled in the fifth, he hit a home run yesterday, he had a very good day yesterday, three for four with a walk, he's been a little bit quieter today. That double to right center, he was stranded at second base in the fifth inning. With one gone, here's the first pitch from Cut in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Here's the 0 1 from Eddie Cut. He winds and delivers. That pitch is in the dirt. One ball and one strike. Ohio trying to take game two in this three game series to 
create an opportunity to have a rubber match tomorrow at pitch hit him off the jersey of Nate Grise and Western Michigan has a base runner which means the tying run is now on deck runner on at first base That pitch misses inside. It's one ball and no strikes. Here comes the 1-0. That pitch misses low. It's two balls and no strikes. That pitch misses, and now it's 3-0. and So Eddie Cutt has put himself in a bit of a spot with nobody warming in the Bobcat bullpen. A couple of Bobcats sitting on the top ledge out there, but nobody warming up or even stretching. Very short lead at first base for Grise. There's a strike on the 3-0 count to make it 3-1. Three, Three balls, one strike, one out. Rudy Rote holds the runner tight at first base. Very short lead for Grise. That's a strike. The count is now full. No. It's low. Our home plate umpire for a moment I thought was going to call it a strike. And he immediately signals over to the Bobcat butt dugout because Rob Smith couldn't believe that it was called a ball. And that's a walk. And now there's runners at first and second. He immediately looked over to the Bobcat dugout and shut down any words that were coming out of it. So now the tying run is at home plate. Ohio leads 10 to 7. Go ahead, run on deck. At second base is Nate Grise. The catcher, Jesse Forstell, just walked. Time has been called, and Rob Smith will have a conversation with Eddie Cutt. And still, nobody warming up in the Bobcat bullpen. This is a long walk to the mound for Rob Smith. He takes his time to get out there. Here we go. We're set to roll again. One out, 10 to seven, the lead for Ohio. The tying run at the plate though right here for Western Michigan in the form of Blake Dunn, their right fielder. He doubled in the seventh inning, one for four overall today, three ground outs along with that double. Here's a grounder through the hole on the left side, base hit. Holding the runner at third base is the Western Michigan third base coach. And so now the bags are packed, and the go-ahead run will come to the plate in the top of the ninth inning for the Broncos. And now the Bobcats have activity in the bullpen. Two right-handers warming up out there. Time has been called, and Tanner Picnic will have a conversation with Eddie Cutt, trying to calm him down and just trying to get this win for the Cats. The batter now is Logan Hudson. He singled in the fourth inning. One for four today. Two flyouts and a ground out. Devine waits on deck. He homered and his three for three has reached base every single time he's come to the plate. A double play here would be pretty nice to end things for the Cats. They've turned a total of 45 on the season. They would love to turn number 46. It would be a game winner right here. One ball and no strikes. That pitch missed inside. Eddie Cut comes set at the chest. He fires. That pitch misses low. Now it's two balls and no strikes. Eddie Cut is in a real spot right here. And Rob Smith and the Bobcat dugout are peeking out to try and find out if anybody's ready. That whole dugout peeked down to the bullpen and the hat's still not being waved. Nobody's ready in that Bobcat bullpen. Two balls and no strikes. Eddie Cut looks in. The right-hander deals. Ground ball, this is to second. Four, six, three, double play and ball game. Paint it green and white, that's a victory for the Bobcats. Aaron Levy to Trevor Hafner, on to Rudy Rote to win it. 
and Ohio has taken game two in this series. It was a much needed victory for the Cats. They've split the first two in this one. They have a chance to win the series tomorrow and their hopes to possibly play in Avon are not dead just yet. We'll wrap up this ball game after this two minute break. Ohio wins it 10 to seven. That's the happy final. We'll talk about it after this two minute break. This is Bobcat Baseball on 1340 WOUB.